So we wanted to tell you about a wonderful book by Laura Morelli. It's called Naples and the Amalfi Coast, A Traveler's Guide to Cameos, Capitamenti, Coral Jewelry, Inlay. It's a long title, but it's basically what to buy in that area. Here is Laura with our interview. I don't think it's any secret that shopping in Italy is akin to nirvana for many people. But, Laura, you decided to concentrate on an area of peop- uh, of Italy that a lot of people don't think about as being a shopping hotspot. I'm talking about Naples and the Amalfi Coast. Why is that such a good area for people who want to get authentic crafts? Well, Pauline, you know, Naples is one of those places that uh, many travelers feel a little bit intimidated by. Um, I can't tell you how many stories I've heard about first-time visitors to Naples exiting the Napoli Centrale train station only to to feel like they wanted to turn around and get back on the train. <laughs> They're met with uh, with sometimes a, a ragtag welcoming committee and, and garbage and um, it. Often, Naples doesn't strike the first-time visitor as a shopping mecca in the same way that Florence or Venice might, but not so fast is what I tell people. If, if you're intrepid enough to pass that trial-by-fire initiation to Napoli, then you can start to peel back those gritty layers, and soon you recognize that Naples is really one of the jewels in the crown of Italy in terms of its artisanal traditions and its rich history. And there are just so many interesting and and unique treasures to discover once you go off that beaten path. Well, I, like you, am a big fan of Naples. I really, really adore the city. And part of what I love about it it is its grittiness. It also has extraordinary museums And as you write in your book, you walk down streets and you can peer into shops where artisans are making crafts in the same way that they did 100, 200, 300 years ago, correct? Absolutely. Um, You know, Naples is not the same as going to other Italian cities. You know, sometimes you've got to look a little harder. Some of the treasures of the city are tucked away in monasteries and churches and some of these other institutions. And they're also tucked away in these living artist studios. And that's what's so great about visiting a really traditional city like Naples is that you have the opportunity to come face to face with people who are people who are making these objects like nativity figures or cameos in ways that their ancestors did. 100, 200, 300 years ago. That's na- very exciting. The nativity figures especially are absolutely gorgeous. We ended up bringing some home for our Christmas tree, but every year at the Metropolitan Museum in New York, the centerpiece is a Neapolitan crash because it is so exquisite. I think it's from probably the 16th century. But these artisans are still doing this kind of detailed, fascinating work. What are the other types of things that you should get in Naples? And where should you shop? Because you can get taken in Naples. You can get stuff made in China (laughs) if you're not careful. That's right. Um, Some of the most typical uh, things to look for in Naples are, as I mentioned, the nativity figures, um, cameos, and um, there are also some wonderful uh, pastries and traditional things that you might not take home in your suitcase, but you might eat on site. Um, There are made-to-order suits and shirts to be had Mm. um, if you know where to look. Um, just outside the city, there is a tradition of coral and cameo jewelry in the town of Torre del Greco, which is on the outskirts of Naples. Um, I tell travelers to avoid the shops around the cruise ship ports. Um, often that's a place where you will overpay for lesser quality. Uh, visitors should really seek out these individuals who are still crafting things in the in the same ways that they're fathers, mothers, grandparents did yeah, and um, it's because not, Naples really provides that opportunity. It's not too hard to do. You walk down a little alley and you peer into a shop and there is somebody doing a craft. We're speaking with Laura Morelli, who is the author of a wonderful book, part of a series called Made in Naples and the Amalfi Coast. So we've talked about Naples. The Amalfi Coast, the crafts there 
were became famous because royalty lived in the town of Caserta. A lot of people don't realize that the palace in Caserta is, I believe, the biggest palace in all of Europe. Is that correct? That's right. A lot of um, visitors today don't realize what an important uh, city Naples was historically and it's in its surrounding region. Um, but it was really a uh, an important royal city, and as a royal city, the uh, the the king and queen patronized many of the local artists, and so many of the craft traditions that survive today. Uh, trace their history to that royal period of the 17th and 18th centuries. In fact, these kings and queens set up these royal manufacturers to make Capo di Monte porcelain, which is now famous, um, cameos in Tarsia, this inlaid wood that's very beautiful, um, other, other local traditions that they patronize, and they tried to compete with other royal courts around Europe for their, their beautiful, what were considered luxuries at that time among that class of Europeans. Metalworking and jewelry. If I may interject, do you in your book provide actual addresses and instructions for finding the best of these shops? Yes, Arthur, my um, my authentic arts guides come in pairs. So each guidebook, for example, for Naples and the Amalfi Coast, also has a companion ebook that has up to date listings of actual um, artisans and museums and other collections and interesting off the beaten path places where you can go. You can even click directly on the links and it will take you to a Google map <laughs> to help you get there because sometimes they're not so obvious. Um, to find. So yes, there are very specific pieces of information where you so you can find where to go. Well, I think people after reading your book and seeing the beautiful photos of these extraordinary crafts uh, that 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 make a real souvenir that aren't something you're going to find anywhere else in Italy or anywhere else in the world. Mm-hmm. It makes you want to buy a plane ticket and head to mm-hmm. Italy. Once again, we've been speaking with Laura Morelli, who is the author of Made in Naples and the Amalfi Coast. Thank you so much, Laura, for being on The Travel Show. Thank you for having me, Pauline and Arthur. It's been a pleasure. And you know, One of the wonderful things about Laura is she's a historian. So when she talks about shopping and these souvenirs, she weaves in bits of history that really make it all come to life. I mean, this was the center of the Bourbon Empire uh, for several centuries. And so these crafts were created to keep royalty really happy. And it's been passed down father to son, mother to daughter. And you, you, you just the quality of of what you see there and is Pauline, so that is a bit of information almost totally unknown to most of us. Right. I was completely unaware of the fact that Naples was once one of the key cities of Western Europe. And the, te- the palace in Caserta is bigger than Versailles Isn't and that as amazing. ornate. Absolutely amazing. So a, a place people wipe off their lists because they're worried about crime there. And there are some problems with crime in Naples, but they should put that back on the list. A gorgeous part of Italy. Okay. We have to take a break. We'll be right back after these messages. 